let's dive in to the cart to detail and buy to detail rates. We'll start by looking at the product performance report. So here we are in our Google Analytics interface, and you can get to this report by going to conversions, e-commerce, and then clicking on product performance. Now, if we scroll down in our table, we'll see a list of all of our products. And at the very far right-hand side of the table, we will see our cart to detail rate and our buy to detail rate. Now we see here that our cart to detail rate is about 25% for the store overall but there are many products that are higher or lower than this. And as an analyst, we wanna figure out what those differentials are and see if we can potentially fix some problems we might find from this. So I wanna actually know what are all the products that have a lower than average car to detail rate. So to do that, I'm gonna click on advanced and I'm gonna create a filter here looking at my cart to detail rate that is less than 25. So that's gonna give me all my products that have a lower than average cart to detail rate. Now, there are a bunch here, but there's one in particular that I'm focusing in on, and that is the Alpine style backpack. Now I see here that it has a decent amount of revenue coming in for the store from this backpack, but the cart to detail rate is pretty low. It's about 8%. So there could be a few things going on here, but we might wanna look at this in further detail so that we can get some ideas of how to improve the shopping experience and hopefully increase our sales for this product. We notice that the buy to detail rate is also low. So I think there's potentially room for improvement here. So there's a few reasons why our cart to detail rate might be low. So one could be a disconnect between our external marketing messaging and our on-site info. So for example, maybe we have an ad that is, have, that is stating an incorrect price for this product. So when users get to our store, their expectations are mismatched and they're not buying the backpack. There could also be technical issues that might be preventing users from actually adding this backpack to their shopping cart. So you know maybe the product is sold out or they're actually running into real technical issues when they're trying to add it to their cart. There's also reasons why the buy to detail rate might be low. And we should take a look at this checkout process to really see if our users are encountering things such as unusually high shipping costs. So if the cost to ship it to you is really high, users might be deterred from buying this product. Or if the shipping times are long, then maybe that is gonna make this product less interesting to our users. There's also another reason, which might be comparison shopping. So if users are going elsewhere and finding this backpack somewhere else and that uh, other store might have a lower price, then they might be deterred from actually completing the purchase on our site um, and, or from even adding it to their cart. So we can look at the products with a high cart to detail rate and a buy to detail rate also because we might find some interesting uh, tidbits from here to be able to improve our marketing efforts. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and click edit on our filter. And this is pretty simple. I'm just gonna switch this from less than to greater than so that I get all of the products that have a higher than average cart to detail rate. Now, one that stands out here right away to me is line number three, our 22 ounce water bottle. Again, we have a decent amount of revenue coming in from this product, but our, our cart to detail rate is significantly higher. It's 74%. So people are adding this product to their cart at a really high rate. I also notice, and this is pretty interesting, that our average quantity on these orders is 19.3. So almost 20 water bottles per order are being bought, which leads me to think that there might be some ways to use this information to actually influence our marketing decisions. Perhaps we package these in groups of 10 or 20 water bottles and market them to teams as a great gift for their teams or for people in their office. So we could create some hypotheses that are related to this and some of the other pages that we see that might be better performing than our average. Things that we might not want to look at is, is there some kind of a guarantee or a warranty on this product? Is the photography or the product description superior to elsewhere on the site? If it's, if it's more enticing to the user, they might add those products to their cart at a higher rate. And then once we find some of these little tidbits that we want to action on, we can actually go ahead and implement them on some of our other pages or even better, we could set them up as an A-B test to test out this hypothesis. There are also other ways to view our product data in this report. It's gonna depend on your implementation, but I just wanna show you a few here. So if we're looking at this table, right above it, we see that our primary dimension is currently set for product, but we can actually change this to product SKU, product category, or product brand. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and click on product SKU. And then you can see that this whole report has now been resorted by the primary dimension of product SKU so that we can analyze all of our different e-commerce metrics by the SKU of the product. Now let's look at another report that is gonna help us understand the overall performance of our e-commerce store. And that's the shopping behavior report. Here we can see our shopping behavior data in aggregate so that we can identify any related issues that might be affecting the Google Merchandise Store's products overall. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and under conversions, e-commerce, we're gonna click on shopping behavior and that's gonna load our shopping behavior report. Now this report is great for many reasons. It helps us visualize the user experience across the whole funnel, how they're moving from anywhere on the site to viewing a product, adding to cart, and then finally checking out and transacting with us. So it's easy to see how users are moving or even falling off between those stages. So a few things I wanna point out in particular. We can actually see how many people are moving from the general site to our product detail pages or from any one step to the next by looking at this number in the top right of each column. In this case, we see that about 17% of users are moving from our general pages to viewing an actual product. The next thing I wanna point out is our abandonment. So down in the bottom right-hand corner of each column, we see a number in red. So here in the second column, our product view column, we see that we have a, an abandonment after this step of about 65%. So 65% of users are leaving without adding a product to their cart. So this could indicate that there might be some overall design issues with their product detail pages. Uh, perhaps we should make that add to cart action or that button more prominent or more enticing so that users are going through this checkout process at a higher rate. So another thing that we have here is the ability to go ahead and create a segment from a drop-off and then remark it to these users. And this is probably the most powerful aspect of this report. So for example, I can click on this drop-down arrow from adding to cart to checking out, and this is going to give me the ability to create this segment. So we know that 67% of these users are dropping off before they're actually checking out. And it's a great opportunity to then remarket to these users with some kind of an offer to actually get them to come back, maybe free shipping on their next purchase so that they return and complete that purchase. So the product performance and the shopping behavior reports help us identify which parts of the shopping experience actually need improvement for individual products or for the site as a whole. By understanding how often products are viewed, added to cart and purchased, you can get a much better understanding of how your business is succeeding or where you may have room for improvement.